Welcome back to the PID Control with Arduino Lecture Series. In this second lecture, I'll be going over the P or proportional term of the PID controller. So in the last lecture, we discussed how feedback systems work and we introduced the PID controller. The error essentially goes through each PID block and their outputs are summed up and form a control signal that drives the process to the desired set point. But in order to understand the advantage and disadvantage of using one or more term, we'll break down the controller's operation by dealing with each term separately. So in this video lecture, we'll see how a closed loop system performs with just proportional control. So let's see what our control signal looks like upon receiving an error signal. So let's say we have a positive step change in the set point, and therefore we get a positive error. Since all the P controller does is multiply the error by the control constant KP, we should get something like this. And it's quite apparent why this is known as proportional control, because with a fixed KP constant, the control signal is proportional to the error. If our error is large, we'll get a large control signal. If our error is small, we'll get a small control signal. And thus, we can adjust our control effort by simply increasing or decreasing this KP constant. So let's see this controller in action. So we have a temperature control system here, where the room temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and the desired temperature is set to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's say the controller is turned on at the dashed line in time. We can see that we get a positive error, and thus our controller moves in proportional to this. The positive control signal drives the process towards 80 degrees, but there's a catch. As we get closer to 80 degrees, the error decreases, and since our control effort is proportional to the error, the control signal decreases along with it, and so we lose the drive into the system. Because of this, the output asymptotes and we're left with an offset. This is the main disadvantage of proportional control, is that we can never drive the error to zero because that would mean our control effort is zero. Okay, so you may think, what if you set the gain from 10 to 100? Wouldn't that at least decrease the offset? Now that is true, but having a very high gain can cause our output to overshoot, and that could be bad depending on our system. And as we can see here, that even with a high gain, you'll never really bring the error to zero. There will always be a small little offset. Now there is a way to remove the offset or bring the error to zero. Looking at the normal structure of the controller, if we were to add a bias signal to our controller's output, this can potentially drive the process enough such that we reach our desired set point. And this is typically how proportional controllers are implemented in the industry. But the disadvantage of this method is that for every new set point, we're going to have to manually change the bias. Now although the proportional controller is easy to implement and can drive the process close to our set point, it can never eliminate the offset automatically. In the next lecture, we'll go over the I or integral term and see how by using the proportional and integral terms together, we can resolve the issue of having a steady state offset. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.